Someone said, be the change you want to see, because it is easier to cover your feet with sleepers than it is to carpet the whole world. While most people wait for politicians to develop their communities, one daring young man has taken matters into his own hands. Having realized that if he waits for the politicians or the government to act, he may have to wait forever, he took the first step to transform his community and he is making great strides. We are at Ngala, a fishing village located near Duangwa in Kota Kota, central Malawi. We are here to witness how a former cattle herd and fisher boy turned out to love education so much that he is building schools. We are here to follow the roots of Banoni Mali, the founder and director of the Banoni Mali Foundation. Banoni Mali is my sister's son. He grew up in a very difficult way. Both his parents died when he was still young. At his tender age, he was passionate about education and he used to fish to support his education. As we walk towards his grandfather's house, there are gardens and trees all around us, just like any Malawian village. Given the reputation fishing villages have when it comes to ignoring education, one would be tempted to ask themselves, can anything good come from Ngala? Yes, something very good came out of this fishing village. A son, not just an ordinary son, but a son who has set his mind to transforming his community. Who is this man doing the work that is normally left for politicians? Banoni grew up here. Having lost both his parents earlier, his fate was left in the hands of his relatives. But mostly, Banoni learned to take care of himself at a very tender age. He spent his preschool years herding his grandfather's cattle together with his cousins until he realized that he needed to be in school like most boys from his village. Even though his grandfather was against this idea, he pushed on until he got enrolled at Ngala Primary School. To support himself at school, he used to go fishing in the crocodile-infested Kambindingu Lagoon. Banoni went to school here at Ngala Primary School, 10 kilometers away from his grandfather's house. He would wake up every morning, take a bath at the nearby river, then off to school. He recalls traveling 10 kilometers to get here when he was young. Even though he would go to school on an empty stomach, his parents would try their best that there was some food when he comes back home. His teacher has fond memories of Banoni. But uh, very little, I remember uh, Banoni Mahe. I don't know what uh, actually uh, made him. Now, uh, in this class, there were no deceits. Uh, learners, they were just sitting on the day. But uh, him, only him, uh, he was taking a very small chair and sitting, not necessarily uh, but him, uh, sitting on the but uh, he, he was uh, taking a very, a very small shape. I, I should say ordinary shape. Term two and in standard five, he was number three in those days we are saying. But uh, had it been, it is uh, these days, it would be uh, in a, a position of grading four. What gave us interest was that none of his parents went to school, so we gave him all the necessary support so that he can be educated. It is obvious that for Banoni, the road to education was not rosy. Banoni had to endure numerous obstacles to get where he is now, 
and he doesn't want the same repeated for the new generation of children from his beloved village. When he secured work in Dubai, he started saving some of his hard-earned money with the aim of building a nursery school at his home village. He named it the Jenny Naila Nursery School in honor of a friend who inspired him to achieve greatness. The school feeding program encourages a lot of learners to enroll and they don't pay any fee. The school has helped us to develop and curb the challenge of illiteracy levels in our community. Bannon's dream hasn't stopped there. He is also constructing a primary school and he says his intention is to build a full boarding secondary school to make sure that the wads he has started training in the nursery school are able to access all their schooling close to home. Like John Chilembe, the famous Malawian freedom fighter, Banoni has a great passion for women empowerment. He has established a vocational skills training for women where he is teaching them skills like tailoring and many other vocational skills. His aim is to have a village that is economically empowered through education, healthy living and more. For sustainability, the Banoni Male Foundation has planted fruit trees from which they intend to reap fruits and sell them to raise funds to sustain the great work they are doing. His work is also creating employment for locals who would otherwise have had no chance of employment. Banoni realizes that education is not the only problem his area is facing. The village has problems with transportation in case of emergencies. There were no readily available ambulances to take his people to the clinic when they got sick and needed medical attention. He thus procured a bicycle ambulance which the villagers used to transport the sick to the hospital. As the villagers testify, the ambulances helped a lot of people. <laughs> this tricycle has helped me a lot. For instance, when I'm sick, they take me to the hospital using this tricycle. It has also helped other people in this village, including expectant women. This bike is a great relief to this community, as we are able to take people to and from the hospital. Previously, we lost many lives because we were using wheelbarrows as means of transportation of our patients. But now we are able to use this bike. Had it been we did not have this bike, this community could have registered a lot of dates, which in my opinion could have been avoided. <laughs> His philanthropic hand does not stop at helping fellow villagers. No, Banoni is extending his giving arm to all schools all around Duangwa. He has set up initiatives aimed at motivating both teachers and students in secondary schools around the Duangwa area, as the deputy head teacher of one of the secondary schools explained. Uh, my name is Chasere I'm the baby of the teacher of Uhunga Synthesis. Uh, Banon Foundation is there to actually encourage the students as well as motivate teachers. Uh, maybe I'll talk much on the part of motivating students. Uh, Banon Foundation, for example, last year, uh, they conducted several activities that, that with the aim of motivating students. For example, they had uh, the competition whereby students had to write the examinations. Now teachers from different schools in this Walimira cluster, they uh, formulated the exams, and then at the end of the day, the students wrote and they competed. So those who won, they were given uh, different prizes. Uh, the, the first one got the phone watch. Uh, I hope we still use it. In a nation where the community's needs are easily forgotten by those in power, 
Banoni is proving to be just the kind of person each community needs to progress. It takes almost an hour to go to Ngala Primary School, so Banon Mali Foundation Schools will help us a lot. I believe we are living in the global world, whereby the challenges in the village can be the challenge anywhere else. That simply means all of us we are responsible for changing this world. At Banon Mali Foundation, we would like to invite you all to connect with us, to work together with us while trying to solve the problem of our community. By doing so, we will be changing the world. My name is Banoni and thank you to all. But he can't do all this work alone. He needs your support. Let's support the great work he has already started doing. Let's transform the Ngala community together.